Hello and welcome to the cyber awareness session uh, as part of the Scribe Fest uh, agenda today. Um, I hope you're enjoying the day so far and we hope that you are uh, getting lots of information. So our session will be covering off cyber awareness, uh, the risks that you face as a council and how to mitigate against some of those risks. So we only have 15 minutes, so we will get started straight away. Just a brief introduction into who I am and who BHIB uh, councils are. We are a council specialist. Hopefully you have heard of us. We are the primary sponsor of uh, National Association of Local Councils, um, and we provide a lot of free training sessions and free resources uh, all around risk mitigation. Um, and information available to councils completely free of charge and cyber awareness being one of these. Um, my name is Lou Perkins. Uh, I am the Partnerships Development Manager at BHIB Insurance Brokers and BHIB Councils Insurance. Um, if you would like any further information, if you would like uh, any help with your own risks or you would like to find out more information about what we've discussed today or even arrange a training session for your own local region or area, um, please do contact us. The email address is insurance insurance at bhibcouncils.co.uk and that is at the bottom of every slide so hopefully you'll be able to find that equally you can go onto the website and find our contact details there but my name's Luke and I will be happy going through the cyber awareness training uh, for an introduction to councils today. So to set the scene, um, we wanted to make you aware of some uh, quite alarming statistics that are only getting worse, unfortunately, as time goes on. Um, UK local authorities have experienced in excess of 98 million cyber attacks over the last five years. So uh, that is a very high number. Break that down. This means that there are at least 37 attempted breaches of UK local authorities every minute. So just say that once again, that's 37 attempted breaches of lo UK local authorities every minute. So that's a, a very high number. Um, at least one in four councils have experienced a cyber uh, security incident and also uh, UK local authorities do not provide any mandatory training in cybersecurity awareness for staff and 16% do not provide any training at all. So good news is this will form part of your training. And as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we are happy to do webinars such as this. We can pre-record them like this one, or we can do live sessions with a Q&A at the end um, for via an association of local councils in the area, uh, or we can do uh, one specific training for your council itself. If of interest, please do contact us and we'll be happy to arrange that for you completely free of charge. Now, to go through uh, how traditional crime and cyber crime is different now and to explain how that has developed over the course of time. So we can all think of what traditional crime would look like. So you've got theft of cash, theft of goods damage to property, um, you know, the, the usual uh, kind of crime that we are well, well, well too familiar with. Now, cybercrime is sort of hidden. Um, it's not so obvious what that crime would look like. So um, instead of theft of actual cash, um, you know, kept on the property, you've got uh, electronic funds, so you've got money held in accounts, um, and you can use online banking to access. Um, You've also got various different um, money that you would store online in um, accounts and checking accounts that, that you have access to, and maybe multiple people would have access to those accounts and can draw from that account. Um, we've also got uh, theft of data, so where previously people would be trying to break into your property to steal you know, physical items, um, now people are trying to steal the data that you hold on your, uh, your local uh, population or the data you hold just to carry out the, the, the jobs that you would do as a local authority. So um, very, very uh, important that that data is kept safe uh, due to the different GDPR uh, regulations that we hope that you're familiar with. If you're not, that is a separate training session that we'd be happy to give some information on. And then lastly, you've got damage to property, which is now damage to digital assets. That could be your website, that could be your hosting systems, that could be your accountancy software that you would use. Luckily, someone like Scribe, you outsource that and that's their security. So you would benefit from enhanced security by using someone else's platforms. So. Uh, um, yeah, lots to consider there um, and, and definitely different types of losses that you could face. Now, we will go through in detail, um, Not we'll do a summary of exactly the type of uh, cyber risks that you face and cyber attacks that you could face as a local council. Um, but one of the main ones we wanted to highlight and go into a bit more detail on was the business email fraud. So there's three different types of uh, business email fraud that could um, you could 
you could see as a council um, and, and these are the ones that we see the most often and these are I would imagine a lot of you listening today you may have seen some of these and been on the receiving end of these and um, hopefully no one's fallen for them but we know all too well that it very much does happen um, so version one is account compromise so classic they've, they've cracked the account they've reset your password and have access to your other email address that allows you to uh, that you would use as a backup so that's quite often the case um, or, you, or even you've written down the password and some someone somehow has got hold of that information. Or sometimes, quite often, you use the same password. We all do it. We shouldn't do it. Um, for multiple accounts, that account is hacked and they also have your email address and they know what systems you use and try to gain access. Um, so they log into the account and they can transfer money from that uh, from the from into their own account from your account um, the second would be bogus invoice schemes and um, we've seen a big increase in this as well so um, they would uh, send in a random invoice pretending to be a supplier so quite often what they would do is that they could hack a supplier's account and um, email account uh, produce a bogus invoice send it to you they may well be your supplier but they just change the account number and sort code so you think you're paying your monthly invoice for uh, a service provider that you use it may only be a thousand pounds or it could be a small amount so you wouldn't necessarily think that uh, any alarm bells would ring um, but then you pay it a couple of weeks later that your, your supplier gives you a call and says oh sorry your your account's overdue we haven't received this money and then they soon realize that actually the money has been paid but their account that the, the the invoice was uh the for the wrong account details um quite often um that 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 is the case um, lastly ceo fraud so this is ceo impersonation call it ceo in the business world but it could just be someone uh, who has authority to issue payments or who would say uh, in your council say we need this payment being made asap to to this account now um, they will often pretend to be that person but the good thing is is that everyone has their strange strange ways around them of how they spell certain things or how they position an email uh, what what grammar they tend to use and how they would sign it off that could be very close because sometimes they will watch an account they'll, they'll be in the email system watching what's going in, in and out on a very uh, regular basis and they will use that template of how you normally communicate issue that and it's usually under um, some sort of time restraint so it's you know this supplier needs to be paid at this time we are extremely late on the payment please do this before the end of the day I'm and then they would also chuck in I'm uncontactable for the next few few hours please get this paid but it's okay just get it done but I will speak to you later um, so naturally the person on the receiving end thinks all oh, this is very important we need to make sure that, um, that that we need to get this paid and I can't confirm the payment so how do we do it and that's how that, that money's then lost. Um, so CFC Underwriting, one of our main insurers that we use uh, and one of the biggest suppliers of uh, cyber insurance in, in the UK, have seen uh, recorded that there's an 80% increase in the number of business email compromise attacks. So those ones that we've just gone through there in the last two years, so 80% increase. So a huge increase um, and something that, uh, that we see often. And I'm sure that you have seen a couple of these uh, attempts, maybe yourself. Um, so what is the what are the main risks that a parish or town council faces currently these are forever developing but these are the first ones that so business email fraud that we just discussed in detail very very important um, high volume uh, uh, incidences in, in that area uh, ransomware attacks you may remember when the NHS was basically shut down completely because they were operating on old operating systems um, they installed uh, a software that just blocked the systems and then it pulls up saying if you don't, uh, you're out of your systems, if you don't pay X amount of pounds into this uh, online cryptocurrency uh, um, kind of forum to our account, uh, we will delete all the data and you have to start from scratch. So that can be very expensive. Um, you've got the phishing emails, which uh, uh, the ones that we've just described there that you can send an email saying click on this link for me you know uh, or, this is the email that, that you've been waiting for just click on it to download it or what do you think of this file and then attach to it um, and then you click on it and then you've installed a uh, harmful or malicious uh, software that maybe could block you out of your systems or they could have access to your emails from that so uh, very important again ceo fraud we just mentioned there um, impersonation is, is a better way to describe that um, human error is a great one. So uh, quite often clicking on that link is classed as human error or um, logging into the wrong details or, or even the, 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 the biggest human error that we see 
uh, all, too, all too often. So you've got a thousand and one different passwords for thousand and one different softwares that you use. You write them down in your black book and you lose that black book or you write it down on your desk and someone steals a post-it note. Uh, quite often human error is, uh, is, is, is the main cause of most losses. Um, and also uh, your software, your procedures are only good as the humans on the end of it, unfortunately. Uh, denial of service attacks. So that is when they um, can fire off um, to your website to, to block your website. So they overpower your website. So again, that could then take down your digital assets that you use, your, your population, your, the people you serve can't access your systems, you have to pay for a new website, you lose that data it can be time 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 costly and expensive to, to reset up a brand new website. Um, telephone hacking is another one we've seen increase. So they will hack into a digital um, phone line and they will start making phone calls to overseas, rack up a huge uh, telecoms bill um, and, and you will have to pay that off the back of that. And they can use that phone line. They can divert phone calls from it and make phone calls. They shouldn't be making phone calls through. And then lastly, the it's data loss. So the GDPR element, so the General Data Protection Act. So um, yeah, going through that is a bit more detailed, but um, very important that you keep your data that you hold on other people as part of being a council safe and protected. So we wanted to make sure that in this quick, short, sharp session, you have some things to walk away with. Maybe try and uh, take a screenshot of this if you can, take a picture on your phone. Don't have enough time to go through every single one of these listed, but please take a picture or email us and say, can we have that simple simple table that you've got as part of your presentation? Insurance at bhibcouncils.co.uk. Just to read some out on there. Um, We've got educating your staff. That's always the top one. So thank you for joining this session today. And this is clearly one of the best things you can do. Human error is one of the one of the main causes to stop human, human error. It's education, education, education. Very, very important. Um, another one to pull out on here is um, using recognized payment gateways for sister for payments. So using uh, big names such as Sage and other people to to take payment rather than taking it down or writing down card details of other people's or using the system and just you know typing it getting it off the phone let the let the person who's got the card go through the payment system rather than you typing in payment systems falls in within gdpr but please if you'd like more information on this or you'd like a screenshot of this or this email to you email me luke and my name obviously luke and then uh, insurance at bhib councils.co.uk happy send that over um so hopefully that's given you a really good insight of exactly the risks you face so far. Um, we've got, uh, we do have a cyber insurance policy, some information on the screen there. So the type, uh, we can explain how the policy would react. Um, you, it's very important that actually it's not treated as a normal insurance policy is that, you know, you, this, this thing goes missing and then you get this much money back. It's actually really important to know that you have uh, a response plan in place. So if something happens, you, you log on and you can't log on, you're blocked out of your system or you realise there's been a, a data breach. If you have an insurance policy in place, you have a port of call to go this has happened, what do we do next? And then they can come in, take over or guide you throughout the process and say, okay, this is the response. You have a response team. This is what we should be doing. This is how we handle the PR. This is how we communicate with people that need to be informed that this has happened. Um, they also, the insurance policy can also cover the IT costs for ensuring the systems that are, no, that are, that are vulnerable. Um, and also potentially cover any loss of money that you, as a result of an invoice fraud or, or taking of uh, digital finances. So um, that is very, very useful because often trying to get that money back from the criminals themselves is also pretty much non-existent. It's, it's extremely hard to do and extremely hard to chase uh, for, the, for the authorities who are extremely overstretched in this space. Um, we've also got the, the ability within the policy to also notify um, the 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 data breaches as they happen. Um, so such as with the data commissioner, they need to be um, addressed. Um, and also um, it's the manpower that goes behind it. So um, the, the additional resource that you need to communicate that loss, uh, the incident that's happened and be able to allow you to free up time to carry on doing your day role, day job because that needs to happen still. Um, but then also uh, going forward, you'll be able to get that, uh, to, get, to get further support to, to help you tackle the problem that's in hand whilst carry on doing what you're doing. So for us, um, we uh, are a specialist in the council sector, sector as you as you're fully aware um, as part of our um, specialist offer we can use um, 
uh, we've got a fixed price premium of £299. We do give you free data breach response alert and monitoring services. Um, we also give you a one hour free cyber and GDPR consultation compliance specialist um, who, who is also a counsellor as well, so we can give that information. Now, I do hope that this has been very useful today. It is a very short, sharp session. Um, if you would like to know more information on this, um, hopefully you're a bit more aware of what you started. You've learned something new. Um, if you'd like to arrange a free consultation with us, completely free of charge, you, there is no need to buy an insurance policy after this. Obviously, we advise that you should to be protected. Um, but if you would like to attain uh, any information from us, please do email us at insurance at bhibcouncils.co.uk. We'd be more than happy to arrange that session um, and we would be more than happy to provide more free advice um, and free guidance on the documents that we produce for you. So I hope this has been useful and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day with Scribefest. Thank you very much.